Team C. Spectre. Chaos Knight. Thank you very much, Red. And indeed, we're ready to get ourselves into the first series here. The first game of the day, Alliance versus Secret and Blitz. Talk to me about this draft. You got Tiny IO, pretty good combo. Alliance thought, well, let's have a bit of the best of both worlds. We'll have the CK in there as well. You know what the weird thing about Alliance drafts are? It seems that Alliance is a team that when they hit a rough patch, instead of uh, what most teams do, which is they try something new, mm -hmm. they go like further back time and they're just like this used to work for us this is when we were really successful let's try it again absolutely and and maybe it will work this time around i mean secret of course if you know the panel kind of called it it's this specter puck combination that we have seen to, uh, teams you know favor a lot in the past or kind of more recently as well are you liking this for a secret or, or do you just prefer alliances kind of owed to you know the good old times I kind of like Secret's lineup better just because I've seen so frequently how the Puck Spectre works. Yeah. This is one of the best setup spells in the game for Spectre. We saw Empire run it quite frequently to great success yes, at both ESL Empire. Manila and the qualifiers. Yeah. And it just feels like a more balanced draft for Secret. Something that really felt missing in uh, their previous drafts is they didn't really seem to have a lot of anything really. Not a lot of disables, not a whole lot of team fight. This time they kind of cover all of their bases, but. Uh, if we look at Alliance's draft, they've got Comfort Heroes a dozen. They've got Loda on the CK, Bulldog playing the Nature's Prophet. Of course, if they win this game, we all know what, what everyone will say. They add a little bit of that new flair with Ake playing that Phoenix. Oh, look at this. I mean, Alliance, they... They really wanted to try and make something happen here with this smoke, but uh, I think one of the things that's helped out is, of course, Secret, you know, they got that early Observer Ward down in the Dark Jungle, and they saw that nothing was going on there. So no one was moving out, so Secret played it very, very careful and, and avert the, the kind of aggression that Alliance was looking for there. Yeah, Puppy going to get Ion shelled up just in case there's any sort of retaliation from Alliance, but looks like they're just going to get one rune apiece. Puck going to make his way mid. And this is a matchup mid. Looks like it's going to be Puck versus Tiny. That should favor Puck. Tiny, of course, going to be able to see us quite well. 67 base. The harass game is definitely going to go in favor of Puck. And with a matchup like this, are we going to see exactly this? The, the IO kind of heading top more to help out Loader rather than coming mid to help out S4? I think he just has to stack. Yep. Universe is not going to really be in too much trouble here as long as uh, he stays within his creep wave. As Loda's gonna make his way up, and maybe he's out of position here. Is they, if they're if they have to go on him now, or he gets the surge, but way too much damage from the ion shell. Loda's well, like, taking a lot, but now Ake with that some ray Loda coming through as well. Can they take down Universal Turn? Drop a shell, but he's gonna go first by the three GM. They will lose Loda in return as Puppy comes in. So it's gonna be a one for one. But of course, Alliance able to secure themselves the first blood, but it does cost them the carry. Yeah, I still think first blood, though, is worth it there in that situation. Loda dying doesn't add too much to the game or lose too much for them. So he's just immediately going to TP back. And what Universe was going for there is he's trying to stay in the creep wave with the double ion shell, but I mean, look at this stuff, damage. It's a good spell, Blitz. It is kind of amazing. As Loda opts not to go for that mango, and Puppy's dropping EGM really low here. Uh, EGM tethering himself back over. Yeah, both the supports now in a very, very, very low position in terms of health. So they've got to be careful here. Being universe, trying to assert the dominance here on the lane, making it hard for Loda to come forward and look for the farm. Especially when the backup is, is going to be minimalized. Uh, they've healed up now, though, both of them. EGM and Ake. They're ready to go again if Puppy and Universe look to start something off. Uh, but looking at the other lanes at the moment, so I mean, this mid lane matchup. You're looking at the CS, it's 9 for 1 against the 2 for 2. It looks like S4 really is struggling here at the moment. Just not a lot of armor on Tiny, 0 in fact, and Puck, one of the best at being able to double that wave up and get in his face. What I mean by that, of course, is at the first wave, when you come into the creep wave, you shoot the orb to make sure that you get 1 or 2 CS with it, then you can push the Tiny back, force him to CS under the tower while you still harass him. 
makes it incredibly hard for melee heroes to deal with it, especially against heroes like Puck, who can spam out like that. The good news for Alliance is that Bulldog's gonna have an okay game here at this bottom lane. Envy, of course, getting free farm, but as long as Bulldog plays this right, scouts with his treants, he should almost always see the Lion coming forward, which means a lot of pressure is on Alliance to try to make this safe lane work because they're devoting three heroes to it, but... This is a really strong lane. Once you get the level 2 Ion Shell, it's going to be so hard for Alliance to support the trade hits. Oh, it really is. I mean, we can see already just, yeah, in terms of who's getting the momentum, it certainly feels like Secret are, are finding the power that they were looking for on this top lane. And the mid lane as well. This CS huge advantage continues favoring Mr. RTZ on his puck. So S4 is going to be struggling here. We'll see at what point, you know, Alliance is out to, uh, are able to find the kills across the map. I mean, maybe top lane looking for Universe. Getting the spirits in, bringing them back. They've got a stun as well. This should be another one here for a loader. And indeed, waits out the surge, follows through with a stun. And it's going to be a second kill for Alliance on that top lane. Meanwhile, meanwhile in the mid lane, Puppy rotating in. Not going to go for S4. S4 is going to be fine for, for the time being. But yeah, two for one for Alliance. That a very, very much needed kill. Because we can see at the moment, in terms of the farm, it, it's pretty much going Secret's way across all the lanes. Yeah, Secret, of course, because of this dual lane set up at the top. Being able to get this really favorable mid advantage, it is going to go in favor of them, but... Alliance are still making kills happen in this top lane. That kind of evens things up a little bit because they have been able to kill Universe twice. At some point though, you are correct, this advantage will make a difference. Especially since Secret's lineup is more predicated in getting into those mid-game team fights around that puck. Alright, because one of the things as well, because of the Lenny situation, you know, MV... He's getting a lot of XP as well. I mean, you know, four minutes in, he is already level five, so he's going to have a really good timing on that Haunt. And then certainly, you know, Alliance and this top lane in particular, they're going to have to be even more careful about when Puppy and Universe decide to go back up there and start to push the lane in, because it's going to be it's very, very scary if Envy's able to get himself involved in these early kills. That is an excellent point that I would hear from neither Cap or Toby. That was well done. <laughs> because they are going for the dual lane, of course. Yeah. The Spectre, if you can get away with it and still get a free farm in this situation, you're absolutely uh, correct. It's going to heavily favor Secret here coming into the mid game. They probably want to sync up both their haunt timing as well as the coil, look for something around the map, which is going to mean that Alliance, now is their time. As soon as they hit the puck and the Spectre hit level 6, they've got to try to predict the movement. I mean, talk to me about the puck. So, on the puck, winning this lane as hard as he is, RTZ, are we going to see this Veil of Discord first to, to kind of kick up for the early fights? Or, or if you're having such a good time, do you still just go straight for that Blink Dagger? I still think the Veil has a lot of applications, especially against heroes like uh, the Tiny and the CK in a game like this. You can burst down the Wiz so quickly, too. The Blink Dagger not being as necessary. You've got a lot of different ways to initiate. Uh, just heads up. And the stats for the puck work out really well. The double Null Talisman make it quite difficult to trade. Potentially in a game like this, though, depending on how well this offlane does, he might just decide to go for the... Oh, yeah, Dream College of TGM tries to tether across, but this is what we're talking about. Five and a half minutes in, Envy getting himself involved. They'll find one and out, looking for S4 as well, with Puppy coming in. It's going to be a second one, a double kill for, for RTZ. And this is what we're talking about. Five and a half minutes in, getting yourself a couple assists on a Spectre. Yeah, you could have wished for more. Yeah, this is exactly how you want to use the Spectre. This is how Empire was using it when they were most successful. Uh... Scandal would set up with the puck, look for opportunities around the map, and just allow Ramses to continue to farm during that time period. And now you open up the map a little bit, make it difficult for the Tiny to catch up. This Tiny has been abused in this game. Just 14 CS to his name right now. I Still, think. Alliance are somewhat close in kills. Of course, with those uh, two up at top, but kills later in the game obviously mean more in terms of gold and experience, most importantly. I mean, if you're Alliance now, surely kind of the next big point you're looking for is what EGM to get that relocate out so you can start to look for action across the map with one of your cores and with Bulldog as well on the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, part of the problem though is Wiz Tiny is not that great against Puck. You've got no kill potential on that hero. It's very easy for the Puck to trade hits with the Wiz because of the phase shift. And as a result, there hasn't been a whole lot that EGM can do. So oftentimes he's uh, gliding around this top lane, which he's going to have to share XP with both the Phoenix and the CK. But they also have to get their Chaos Knights some solo XP and they have to get their Phoenix in solo XP, so it's a matter of just not enough lanes to spread out this amount of XP that they all have to grab. And as a result, you see even Universe hitting his level 6. And look Alliance at behind it. Again, just the pressure being put on by Secret. They move in onto S4. He's going to try and toss back Puppy. He will, but it doesn't matter. Goes down again. Killing spree now for Arteezy. 
putting pressure on on the tiny they, they've realized the weakness of alliance at the moment the fact that s4 has struggled in the laning stage and, and they're punishing it beautifully each and every time secret yeah. they simply just can't help his lane their two supports have no kill potential so that means the puck can continue to play up in his face which means that rtz never has to go back and you have to wait for the timings, and this is where Secret realize they can get so aggressive. They understand. Alliance are not going to make a move with the level 4 IO. They're not going to make a move with the level 5 Phoenix. Oh, you can see here, Sort just going in with the combo, but again, Artur's able to get himself out. He's got the infused raindrops on him as well with the tread, so... Uh, it's going to be very unlikely for the for the Tiny to, to be able to catch this puck out on his own, even if he hits the full combo. Just not yep. going to be quite enough to break through this puck at the moment. Alliance, they're looking for objectives, though. They will be able to get the push on on this top lane, and we'll get the tier one. Loader claiming the goal for him there. So level six now, and, and of course working towards that arm. It's going to be pretty much done. It's these two supports, though, from Alliance that have fallen quite far behind. You see Pilot Dio... Five and a half, Eternal Envy already level eight compared to level six of the Chaos Knight. Of course, there are opportunities for them to turn things around. They've got the armlet completed now. It's more about getting involved in these mid-game teamfights. Alliance's uh, setup time is going to be incredibly quick. As soon as they hit all their levels, I think they just go for it. Waiting for S4 to grab a Blink Dagger might cost you a little bit too much time and too much tempo against a team that features a Spectre Puck. Oh, look at this, I mean, Puppy and oh, Arteezy, they're ready to go, and Envy jumps straight in. With the Horn onto Bulldog, Bulldog's gonna go for the TP out. Do they have a Dream Coil in the neighborhood? They do! Arteezy drops it down, cancels the TP, and now you're not gonna be able to teleport out with that one either. As they'll burst down, oh, Bulldog now, they're now the total's to load loaded. There's four heroes on Secret, closing in on the Chaos Knight. He's trying to run, he's trying to hide, he's got the arm, they can get himself out of here, maybe with a healer back here, but no, they've lost Loader as well here, Alliance. Ake, he's falling low as well, he will be able to Icarus dive out, they do find the kill on Puppy in return. Now it's for EGM, can they try and turn? Nice Duke of the Earth Spike, but RTZ still playing around with him. Look at the Hex out to S4 Universe. Question if he can move himself back in, but he himself has got to run. He's got the stun, though. Oh, and he gets it. S4, very nicely on the tip, and at the same and time, Bulldogs found Envy. This could be Alliance bringing it back round, and they'll find themselves another big one. Alliance really, really needed that. Their secret were coming in hard, you know, diving up to the Tier 2, and Alliance... Well, they were able to punish that kind of uh, over-aggression here from Secret, them maybe getting a little bit carried away with themselves because of how the early game was going. Yeah, they thought because they were able to pick off the course, it was going to be a 3v5 fight, but of course, waiting by the Tier 2 tower, and here we go, is... Come back into the lane, smoked up. We're just going to farm, but... EGM and Ake kind of being the saving graces, they're baiting Secret further and further, keeping Tiny alive for so long with that Sunray and that Tether. Yeah, but they really need a little nice. bit more of this. Yeah, they really do. I mean, we can see the net worth differences between your, your kind of the two big cores from both sides aren't that different. You know, we are still very much at a close bit of the game. And a lot of that is down to that last bit of play from Alliance. Yeah. And, and as we were saying, you know, with the relocate online now for EGM, if they can start to find those pickoffs, if they can start to try and punish Envy when the Horn is down, they can easily get themselves back on top of the Spectre. Despite Loda's two deaths this game, he's done a really good job of keeping up in farm. Just 90 uh, net worth behind the Spectre, who's had a much easier time of things. More CS, more kill participation, but still, Loda doing a good job of keeping up, especially with that tower last set up at top. And Alliance have kind of evened up the pace a little bit. And the Secret, they had no reason to make that kind of play. I think that was one of those situations where teams overzealous about things yep you know the comms might get muddled and they're like yeah kill these guys and you stop to think about wait we really can't we're under a tier 2 tower they've got a really strong double new combination and we've used up a lot of our abilities absolutely it just seemed seemed to be the, the situation and and you know you start to look at it because you look at bulldog you know he, he's only died the once he's still finding a good amount of farm he's keeping himself uh, on parallel with universe's dark sin and now uh, a smoker from ake and loader Loader on the CK, he's got the ult ready, but at the same time, Puppy and Artur, they're smoked up, and, and Dream Coil and Doom are available. Each other here. See how they end up uh, coming into this one, and uh, Ake just spelled the smoke, he, he's on the high ground there, they've got the edge, and they'll just get themselves out of it. Uh, a secret there with that attempt to move up to the high ground, gonna be unsuccessful. I think Alliance were just looking for any sort of fight engagement that they could. You have to smoke up, especially against the Doom and the Puck. And they had Tiny re uh, ready with the Wisp up the top. Trying to make something happen. They realize, in terms of experience, their carry is still getting behind the Spectre. Net worth-wise, though, they have come back in a big way. We talked to death about the laning phase and how much the Puck was able to gain. 
Well, now you've got a tiny that's 200 net worth more than him. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah absolutely. It's, it's been a great play from Alliance in terms of just stabilizing the game and getting themselves back, back to this position. Uh, and I mean, as you've been saying, S4 on the tiny, I mean, it feels like over the ages we've seen a lot of different builds for the tiny, but you feel it's almost going to just be the blink dagger straight up the skin. Yeah, I think yeah. they need to be able to start fighting. Best thing you can do against heroes like Doom uh, is you want to start the fight, make sure that he dooms an inefficient target. For example, if he dooms after Tiny uses his combo, what is that worth for Team Secret? Yeah, absolutely. And at this point, I think Secret realized the kind of error there when they, when they went for that kind of play by the tier twos, as we're seeing them kind of settle it down, making sure that they get the bigger items off, you know, looking for Universe to get that mech done. And uh, then maybe trying to have a go. I mean, Loda at this point feeling confident enough to start pushing down at the bottom. He's got the backup of Ake hiding in the tree line just in case anything goes down. Uh, Secret themselves, uh, they're more kind of orientated around the top half of the map. And it makes them try and go for a push up top and, and maybe go for a pick off as they've got their eyes onto S4. The scam will come out and it's a nice scam from Alliance. So Alliance, they know what's going on and S4 will react accordingly and get themselves uh, behind this oh, tier one. Actually, yeah, here. he's been a little bit risky with this one. Even with the scan S4, he knows he's got EG. Oh, ho, ho, EGM. The drive by, the finger was there, but the relocate in time. Styling on them there, very nicely done. I mean, EGM always certainly will die on the way back in. This but... really feels like Alliance didn't have to risk his life, though. I was gonna like say, it... they, they saw it with the scan. Yeah, like you just talking about, they saw it coming in, they know that that's gonna be multiple heroes there, not just the puck. And they opt to go for the trade, but... A little bit of a mistake by Alliance there, losing a hero for no reason. Secret. Yeah, I trying mean, to get some kills around the map, and they're trying to get the Spectre, most likely the Radiance in a game like this. Yeah, I mean, I guess Alliance, they're maybe just thinking that they could have tried to play for eight, maybe just hoping it was just going to be RT easy, maybe he orbs in, and then doesn't expect the IRE gen to top the tiny back up so he can turn around and get the combo off, but... Yeah, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a... It's not the worst situation for Alliance, it, it is just the IO, but still... Something that Secret are going to be happy with, especially getting that tower as well. But uh, all in all, 14 minutes in, this is certainly uh, finding out to be a rather close game, uh, considering the, the edge that Secret actually did have in, at the start of this in the lanes. You know, Alliance have really managed to bring this one back down to earth, and, and was, now Alliance are looking for Roshan. Yeah, it was honestly just that one moment yeah. at the top. If they hadn't done that, and they had kept their cool, and they had a dope for that, they could have established map control. When they had just picked off two of the cores, they could have gone for that top tower, allowed their Spectre to just continue to snowball into the game and not risk anything. But by going for that play, now the map has opened up a little bit for Alliance. Off of just that one set of uh, kills, is now they're going to grab an Aegis, pick it up on the Tiny, and now S4 is well ahead. Absolutely. Of that he, 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 indeed. And this is the thing as well, you look at the side of Secret. So, Envy's he's gone for the Vanguard build on the Spectre. Are you, are you a fan of this one? Uh, I saw that he hesitated for a second. He wasn't absolutely sure. He resold the Ring of Health, but this is a build that I think we've seen How go for from time to time, or at least he grabs the bit booster. Maybe puts them in a little bit better oh, fighting shape. Look at this alliance coming up to the high ground here. They'll catch out Loader on the front lines, and Loader in a lot of trouble. EGM coming in with the tab. It's not going to be enough to save him with the Doom drop onto EGM. Secret will be finding themselves a second. They've lost Pylai Die, but it's a very good trade at the moment. Can they find themselves anything more? Artur surge forward so he can close the gap. Jumps in. S4 pops out the toss, but still, does not matter? Because they're moving in for more. Envy with the chase down onto the Tiny. They've got to be careful. He's got Aegis. He has a Dean, he'll get the Avalanche off, and he may not even lose the Aegis here. The heal from Ake, S4 tosses back Envy, and they'll keep the Tiny alive. Tiny, he's gonna have that Aegis intact. And now Secret, they've just gotta look to get themselves out. They should be happy with the trade so far. CK and an IO for the Lion. Uh, this time, not making the same mistake as they did before on the top lane, and, and trying to go in for more when there's so much save and sustain from Alliance's lineup, thanks to Ake's Phoenix play. Yeah, they just have to be disciplined right there. They have to understand, they're still at the end of the day chasing Tiny that has an Aegis, S4 smartly decides to avoid losing it, understands that there's no point for it. Maybe there's quick turnaround potential, but they can get even more aggressive with Radiant structures. Yeah. The secret, they've used a lot of ability. Oh, look at I this like that. Well. What a pick off! Nicely done in the sideline, that secret instantly pinging that out, says uh, Pi says, I think there might be a ward here, guys. Alliance get the kill, look at the tier one as well, and and a night pick of course here for Loader, this works, oh actually, oh that is S4 again with the toss back, Loader pops the arm there, the stun as well, Puppy, he's gone, there'll be a dream call onto three from Artis, but where's the follow up universe, coming in with a vacuum, on as well, Loader pops his, oh he's ready to fight back into this one, Alliance, they're very much ready, and they are, you know, they want to fight at this point, a secret, they just got to back up.
Yeah, a little bit of an odd decision to go for the egg there, but Ake gonna refresh the stunner if they toss MP oh, back in. Oh, S4. S4 finding these heroes, chucking them in, and RTC, he's down as well. And that's a dominating tree, oh. but Ake. I mean, he does get finger, but it's but still, nonetheless, the Alliance here. I mean, as, you, as we keep going back to that one play from Secret at the top, they seem to just tilt it downhill since that part of the game. Yeah, taking really inefficient trades there. They have to understand that Tiny with that Blink Dagger is going to be an incredibly fast gap closer. With that Aegis available, S4 is going to be reckless with it. I mean, that, that's the thing. That that bit of the game, we saw S4 do pretty much the same play, what, three times in a row. He yeah. just moved in, chucked someone back, blinked in, chucked like, someone back. You guys are going to stay and try to defend yeah. this. You know we have ward, ward Vision. They have the Aegis available. Team Secret, not really in a position to fight. They don't have the best ways to start these fights, especially since they wasted both that Dream Core and they didn't really have follow-up for it, but they take the fight regardless because they wanted to try to save that tier 2 mid and it cost them dearly. And now there's a Shadow Blade on S4 as well, so, you know, maybe they're like, all right, guys, we're not going to be called out by the Blink again, but S4's going to be like, aha, I've got a Shadow Blade, and they might not expect that. 18 minutes in for Blink Shadow Blade Tiny, a Tiny that, you know, the CS was being tripled by Arteezy in the mid lane. It's, it's just really all falling apart here for Secret and Alliance that are just playing really, really cleanly now at this point of the game. There's two reasons to go for this type of build. Uh, one being you just want to play that ultra mobile, you want to keep both the support really poor. The second, and if you look at Secret's lineup, it is difficult because you want your team who's naturally a lot greedier and Lion does need items to be useful. You see every single time Pi just gets blown up in these fights. Secondly, think about the way that Spectre wants to play this game. He wants to split up, let his team set up for him for these uh, four-man kills and oh, look at this. They found Puppy in the jungle. S4 with the link down, sorry, the Shadow Blade reveal, and it's another kill for Alliance. Yeah, she said the, uh, for those reasons. I guess the Shadow Blade. Oh, nah, he's he's already out, but oh, they, they they might be able to catch him here. They're trapping him, but no detection. That's a lucky Invis rune for Arto. Yeah. Lucky, lucky Invis rune. So this is gonna make it really hard for Secret to get back into the game to pick up with the yeah. Shadow Blade, because now you need Pilot Die to just sit behind the Spectre. They can't take four v five fights around the map. They can't set up for this hero anymore. Now you're in such an awkward position where you kind of have to group up together, but they don't even have the best wave clear. They've got to kind of risk their puck if they want to defend a lot of these towers. And we saw what happened last time when he just orbed in. And there we go. Alliance, they're going to be able to find themselves another objective here. Secret, they do have Dream Coil up, but... It's going to be questionable if they want to try and fight into this one and again. Just look at this, S4! I mean, this is ridiculous! That is the fourth They are losing heroes left, right, and center to this Tiny. S4 is just it's just single-handedly destroying Secret. I feel like the last two pushes have been successful as they have for, for Alliance because S4's just been in there, just picking Secret off one by one. And there just seems to be no help for each other. They're, they're not reacting to it. And it, RTZ, they're not learning from it either as well. Yeah, what we talked about is as soon as Alliance hit their item timings or more importantly, their level timings. Yes, they were losing in the early game, but we said they were going to get it going in a hurry in the mid game. They were going to try to reestablish tempo. This is the type of fights that you have to take, but Alliance at the same time, they've got to be feeling so good. I mean, they, they must just think, what's yeah. going on? We're just being fed kills. Okay, we'll take back map control, I guess. It really feels like, well, this game so far is maybe emphasizing one of the problems that people have, have kind of called Secret out for. You know, Secret, obviously a lot of very individually skilled players. And, you know, we saw that in the laning stage, you know, it, they were playing absolutely perfectly. But when it comes to fighting as a team, you just can't compete with the synergy that Alliance can bring oh, to the board. look at the top is S4. He's going to go for Puppy here. Right, here we go. Leading in. The, the combo stun, is missed, though. Yeah. So with the Horn and the Dream Comp, maybe they can turn around. Alliance, do they have any help? First of all, coming in, they do EGMs there with the save. Brings the man back out. Wow, Again. that could have been the comeback for Secret. Yeah, if they can kill S4. Everybody from Alliance. Oh, look at this as well. Alliance want to fight. They want to fight. They know some of the ults are being used. DGM's going to get doomed. That's the Doom Run as well. Look, Alliance are moving in. They want to take advantage of the fact that Secret, they've only got a wall available at this time. No Dream Coil, no Horn. Envy's already trying to TP himself out, or the Blink Out is there to south. So Secret nicely disengaging there, and it was a good job they were because Alliance, they really want to jump on this. They really wanted to try and re engage. Yeah, that was good of Secret. They understand, okay, just take the Whisk kill. Don't get over, don't overextend, don't get too greedy. That's what happened last time, and it cost them dearly. Alliance are still incredibly strong. They have that Phoenix Egg and that Sunray. This is not a team that you necessarily want to fight at this point in the game. Still EGM, very good save. Not a tiny. Really, really nice rarely, from EGM. Yeah, rarely makes that mistake. I mean, it's kind of what we come to expect, of course, from EGM on his eye. No doubt about that. The saves are always going to be there. And here we have Alliance. Don't say that, man. He's going to watch his cast and think he's good. 
<laughs> they never let him get complacent. As Puppy, he's gonna get sprouted up. They might not yeah. have the damage for this. And again, he's brought in. The Earth Spike will come out. Maybe this is the chance Secret to turn. Dream Cold Wall, Every Universe doing his best here for the team. Bulldog, he's gonna go down. They'll finally kill the Nature's drop it now. S4 on the back lines, but this time Secret are gonna be trying to punish him. Do they have detection though? Now, looks like they haven't brought any to the fight, and s is gonna be able to walk this one off. He is gonna be A-OK, -okay, so losing Bulldog there. Do you get the tower now, S4? Coming back oh, in, Ake there as well. With the sun, maybe they could do this. They'll lose S4 though. This time Alliance the ones to make mistakes and Secret the ones to be uh, capitalizing off the back of it. The rest of Alliance have got to run. So losing Bulldog, losing S4 there. That's going to be a nice swing that, that Secret will, will be happy with, especially in terms of the, the financial gain for taking down that Tiny. Yeah, Secret are still in an okay position. Something I wanted to talk about before that last fight is Envy's Radiance timing is still going to be very stable. Like This guy has been sort of the rock for Team Secret. and In the past, he was talked about as maybe the most volatile player on this team, but so far in this tournament, Always shows up to play 2-2-9, two, two, and nine, just 500 gold away from that Radiance, and that's something that Alliance can't ignore. This is the next major item timing for Team Secret. This is what they're going to try to fight around next, and it'll determine a lot of the game. If the first showing of the Radiance haunt goes bad, maybe Alliance just continue to snowball forward. They can go for the Roshan and make their game very easy. But if they can win that fight, all of a sudden now Alliance are going to be on the back foot again. Absolutely, and we are seeing you know, Universe now with the pipe picked up. This is going to be huge against uh, Alliance in these team fights. It's, it certainly feels like we, there was going to be that mid-game where Alliance, you know, the maneuvers are very much there. But there's still going to be that point where, you know, Secret, you know, they're able to kind of restabilize after a bit of a rocky mid-game and, and, and come back with that, that kind of knowledge that these kind of, you know, giants, these, these, these heroes of Dota over the years are, are going to be able to put together. It just honestly feels like both teams, whoever plays the defensive position so far, has been all right as so many Treants start to filter in to that Roach pit as the crowd cheers. They are way too happy about seeing Treants. Well, let's see if uh, a secret able to do anything about this one. Looks like, looks like they're not going to be able to make their way over. They do have a horn, but yeah. none of the other rest of the team are going to be around. Might be the most back and forth game that we've seen. It could be. It really does. So far. It really does feel like that. And it's because of the, it is just, you know, these tick kind of the fights around the tier twos where suddenly the momentum switches, but now Alliance grabbing themselves that Aegis. I mean, secret, the question is, can they really try and find anything with this smoke? Looks like they just want to grab a hero in case they decide to solo farm out. That's often what happens when you grab that Aegis. You feel so confident that the enemy team doesn't want to take a fight. It starts to open up the map a little bit. But there is a time period where you just have to get out. If Alliance decide to stick together, there's no way that Secret necessarily want to take this fight. Especially since Envy is closing in so close to that Radiance. You don't want to fight without it. Absolutely no reason to. And they're certainly going to want to play it cool until that point. Uh, that's for sure. Yep. I mean, at least maybe Secret could try and get this push out and take this top tier 2 away from Alliance. I think you just Ion Shell. Let Envy push out, force uh, Alliance to send up maybe the Nature's Prophet solo, then maybe they can get a pick off. I think that's what they're going to hope for. So up at top, the person that you should send up here is either your Aegis Carrier or your Nature's Prophet. Push the lane out. Probably in this situation, your Aegis Carrier, just because you feel more comfortable. And the ward's going to spot him coming in, and that might just force the Seeker to go back in. That's exactly what happens. And he, as you said, secret back up for the next fight, load up with the BKB ready and uh, an online here for this Chaos Knight. Yep. Main reason they send their Aegis Carrier there instead of their Nature's Prophet like you normally would is because at bottom nobody was pushing in the lane and it was so far close to the base. Why would Envy not farm that if he was just sitting up there at the, up at top? So Secret deduce, or Alliance at least deduce that everybody in Secret is in their jungle. Which is why EGM is going to scout things out. And what do you, you think about uh, Bulldog's uh, choice to build this game? He is going to go for that straight Axe Refresher build on the Nature's Prophet. You push out the lanes. Yeah. You try to keep uh, Secret inside your base. Something I don't think a lot of people realize about this Aghanim Scepter is the whole point of it is to shove in the lanes very safely so you don't have to show yourself on the map and the enemy team does. For example, if all three lanes are pushed in, you send three heroes to diverge, then you have all of a sudden the opportunity to go for kills because you have free information. But at the same time as the game goes on, could it not be a, a bit of a plus for Secret in the fact that you've got a Dark Seer Iron Shell, you've got a Spectre Radiance, it's going to be more money into the pockets of these heroes? Yeah, that is always going to be the argument against it, just because it does pump up a little bit more farm. Uh, at the same time, you're farming the equivalent amount, right? 
if you push in the lane, then they get the lane creeps to work with, because if you notice how Bulldog pulls his streams back instead of pushing into the lane, unless they go for a straight-up push like this. So in that situation, it's okay. And what that allows Alliance to do is now you can farm out your jungle because these three cores have to constantly push out the creep wave. It's like you're you're getting the same amount of resources when it comes to just farming uh, these static creeps, but you get a little bit more because Alliance can abuse the jungle. And this point as well, see on uh, RTZ, he's very, very close to that, that agony as well, so I think he had the, the point boost on the courier. Uh, oh no. And did he pick it up a cell? Maybe, maybe my eyes deceive me. So he's just holding the staff at the moment. Maybe uh, contemplating building Yules, maybe? into the Yules instead. Yeah, I swear that point boosted, but yeah, I guess going for the Yules instead here on the pot. I mean, do you feel uh, is this a game where Yules is is necessary for the man? Or it, you know, seeing the BKB on loader, would it be nicer to get that Aghanims as soon as possible? I think once he sees the BKB, yeah. maybe Ags is actually a really good decision here. And Secret, they're going to take the fight around the fact that they've got the Radiant on the back. Oh, here we go on to EGM straight away. The back will be popped. EGM, he's gone. Load on the sidelines with the ult. He's ready to move in. Start to fight. Puppy dropped the Doom onto Bulldog on the back of this fight here. It'll be a buyback from EGM. Here we go. Puppy trying to finish off Bulldog, but it's going to be hard to do so. It's just kind of breaking up the fight here for Secret. They've lost two. Loader and Espo still hanging around by Artur. EGM and Ake biting a Puppy. I mean, Puppy, he's in a lot of trouble here. He's going to go down as well, so they'll find themselves a third alliance doing it again. And just what seems to be a bit of a scrappy fight there from Secret. They're fighting into the high ground. They're splitting the fight up. And Alliance, they'll very happily kite out the, the different kind of halves of the team and, and punish it in a three-for-one trade. Yeah, they just didn't really have the best target to go for in Doom. We talked about it too. When you look for those fights without vision, they walk uphill, like you said. They get caught into that clump. They get EGM, but he immediately goes for the buyback. He understands that, he, uh, that his hero being picked off does not mean that much. Whereas Alliance, they almost always have the ability to re-engage yeah. because of the Sagas. And now the high ground potential comes they know secret don't have the back uh the specter ultimate nor do they have the doom it should be just a free push for them absolutely and also oh, jumping in with the stun and the ah it's a vacuum what's a nice one as well the make pot straight away there by egm pulled on with the double ultimate it's gonna be flying for this fight doing a significant amount of burst and ake jumps in with the egg they're not gonna be able to take this one down secret they will find loader but loader's got the ages he's ready for round two mv gonna get caught out by the sun stun is puppy as well on the back lines it's in a lot of trouble loader bringing him in with the rift the pipe is there keeping puppy alive pretty yeah. going down from secret so many spells used though yeah, very full-on full-on clash and of course off to the back of that one on the one before so yeah our tour he's settled his mind he is going to be going for that axe and very very close as well i think in fact he's as he yeah he's just needs to pick up the point booster so just needs a few hundred more and he'll have that done ready for the next fight but at the same time there we obviously saw you know Bulldog does have that refresher, and, and very nice as well, just saving it for these engagements where you can get a double nature's wrath through. And I could do a lot of heavy damage to the back line as a secret. Yeah, I got really hyped for a second. I was like, yeah, man, I agree with you, Odin, he's going to do a lot of damage, and then I realized they just pop uh, they just that pop the first pipe, pipe and yeah. then it just <laughs> kind of got negated. Yeah, it's I mean, uni Universe has certainly been doing his best this game. We saw, you know, the great item timing uh, in these fights as well. You know, the vacuum walls have been real. It just seems that there's not really been the follow-up yet, but of course that's going to change as, as Envy starts to get more items on his Spectre, there's going to be a point where that combo is very, very deadly. Alliance, though, still in an okay position. Haven't really been able to use that egg to its fullest potential so far, but... Oh, S4 now has the BKB. Makes it very hard for Pylidae to survive in these fights. And that is one of their main initiators as well. It's, it's, it's really going to be all about Arteezy getting the stream coil on, on both S4 and Loader. You know, if he can do that, it's going to make the fight so much easier for Secret. They just need a lot of control factors to go along with it, especially if you can hold them into something like the wall yeah. with that Spectre Ultimate, allow Envy to get a little bit aggressive. And that will mean is it comes down to who starts the fight. If Alliance can start the fight, initiate on a hero, blow somebody up, turn into a 4v5, then it might not actually matter. Oh, and here we go. They found S4 out. He'll put the BKB, but he's been doomed up, coiled up as well. This man. I think he may be a, a very, very dead man. There's not really the save around. EGM's trying to make his way over, but he's too far away, and Secret will pick that one there. He is the ward's so pinged far. out as well, all thanks to that Radiant Ward spotting S4 as he tried to get himself uh, out and around by the Secret shot. Still way too greedy positioning by him. Nobody on his team was really in a position to be able to jump over there. Maybe if Ake was there, they would have gone for the relocate play with the CK after they had used the Doom. And then you can just teleport the Nature Prophet in, but way too far away for somebody to help him. And with no Tani on the map, secret. I feel very confident about pushing on this top lane. 
And uh, the question is going to lie, let's try and do anything about it. It looks like Minestor is going to be back in 30 seconds, so, so maybe. And uh, Secret, well, looks like they don't want to stick around on the top. They want to well, they want to come back down towards the mid lane. I believe Alliance should go for some kind of play. They know that Spectre Haunt is down. That's going to be one of the bigger damage dealers. They know Doom is down too. The Dream Coil has a pretty... A short cooldown, 75 seconds. And they're doing exactly that, look. Yeah. With I think they go for, for the bottom lane. Uh, yeah, Bordeaux's here. looking to TP to set this one up, and here's the relocate. They've got to find Envy. Envy needs some kind of help. He's not going to get it. Look at the vision for the Rift back into the stun. Here's Ake as well with his Ray of Doom. And a big kill for Alliance. 60 seconds off the map for Envy. I think they and exactly as you said. Now. You know, they, they play it perfectly. They see the opportunity for the pickoff. They know there's no haunt and they find that high value kill. Exactly. They know there's going to be no turnaround potential for Secret. Secret, when their cooldowns are out, you notice there's a pattern. They decide to spread up and farm, push out the lanes. But Alliance, they've got one of the more mobile lineups that I've seen. They've got the Shadowblade Tiny who can make his way over, the Relocate and the Nature's Prophet teleports. Almost instantly dragging four heroes over. And now the high ground push is coming. They do have Doom available in 15 seconds. <laughs> S4 blinking in soon if you could get a pick, uh, a bit of a throwback. There's vacuum wall available. And let's see how good the defense is. Veil's been dropped. Envy does have buyback. Here we go, coming in. Is he going to pop it? 20 seconds indeed. Does he need to get himself back in or can he got a hold on their own puppy? In trouble, brought in S4 on the back lines, controlling Universe, chucking him into the middle of the fray as well. And puppy falling low. He's got to get himself off the sidelines. EGM has been zoomed up. Ake chasing down the Doom, trying to burn him down with the spirits. There's a stun on S4 under the tower. Envy's going to be back in five seconds. Will have that horn up. They picked off S4 here. They do end up losing puppy. EGM chased down by Pi, but now the horn coming through. They'll look for make a beeline for Ake. No Jump on EGM first. EGM is going to drop. They'll get Ake as well. Three here on the defense. Double kill for Envy. And it's a stronghold from Secret. They are going to lose their bottom racks, though, as classic Admiral Bulldog gets something out of that push that Tier 3 tower manages to hold. Secret going to walk away the clear winners of that fight, despite that racks being taken. He got a lot of gold on the Envy. And he managed to hold the melee racks, most importantly. And, and just not being uh, forced to use the buyback as well. Very, very nice here for Spectre. But yeah, as you said, Bulldog, he is slowly and surely doing it. And that's the thing as well. When a secret fight like this and, and end up losing just one or two, there's always going to be that opening. And it's going to be <laughs> even harder and harder to defend against this pushing power. As Octarine is nearly done as well on the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, he's almost always going to keep the lane shoved in. Now he's just popping in his farm a little bit. I think that is the right decision here. Is... Bulldog has to make sure that he's able to get mobile around the map, push out the lanes, force Secret to come out and farm a little bit. You saw that at bottom especially, because the lanes are always shoved in, they had to send two people top, they had to send Envy at bottom. Envy realizes half a second too late that the relocate's coming in. Some uh, nice big iron pickups for both sides, you know, Envy now with the Manta done. At the same time, EGM's got the Greaves on IO, so something else that's just going to make these little fights uh, around the high ground uh, a lot harder for the Secret to defend against. Third uncontested Aegis Cheese of the Game 4 Alliance. Looks like they're pinging out. Maybe they defend this. They should at least shoot the orb over to check. Roshan is still very healthy. And Secret. They have almost all their abilities up. Five seconds to go in the haunt. I think this is a fight they should take. Why Alliance are going to back out. They're certainly contemplating it, Secret. Correct play right now to make for Alliance is to push out the lanes. Push out that top lane especially. Force... Uh, Secret to come back because they know Secret can't take Roshan for themselves. They just don't have that burst damage. So what you're going to see potentially is Alliance just pushing out lanes. I don't think that they should just stay static on the sill. At least send Bulldog up to that top lane. Mm -hmm. lane. Actually a relocate in there from, from me jumping and loader. Uh, I'm not going to find anything. I actually playing really aggressively. I mean, you can see as well, Arto just keeping eyes on the status of the Roshan. Alliance, around by the secret shot. You notice they're pushing out top, and I think Bulldog, yes. This is something I wanted to see from him just 20 seconds earlier. Start pushing out that top lane. Yeah. Should cut the creeps over too. And this is going to force Secret to come deal with it. But Secret just walking into the Roche pit themselves. Must be Not sure how quickly they do this though. Alliance know exactly what's up. The question is, can they get themselves over in time? There's a DD on Puck. I mean, every little helps. They're, they're whittling it down. Alliance, can they get themselves in? 
There's no relocate up if, uh, if a save's gonna be necessary. Loader, he's ready to go in. Pops the ultimate, the BKB for as well. Focusing down Pi on the back lines. He has been Doom Loader, but he'll take Pi out. At the same time, Envy warning on DGM at the back, but he turns himself across. It's gonna be a successful supernova hit. Pop again, no jump in. Puppy as well, falling low. The vacuum, the wall there from University, just no follow up. They can't do anything off the back of that combination. And Puppy's part, the pipe's not gonna save him. They'll find themselves a second and now moving in onto Universe Alliance. They'll get a third and back into the pit for Alliance. They played that portion of the game very, very nicely, and Secret just feels like they're getting outplayed and outmaneuvered by Alliance at this stage of the game. Yeah, top laners are already pushing in, like you saw, S4. I know look for Envy on the other side of the map. Port's gonna come in from Admiral Bulldog, but as soon as they started pushing in top, they realized nobody was gonna defend this. They realized that oh. they actually walked in oh, the top. Oh, uh, looks like he... Oh, the Wrath, the Wrath. Is he gonna bounce? Is he gonna get him? Oh, the Oh, Loader! Brings him down, that's a gem on the deck as well. That's easy, will buy back straight away here. But Alliance now heading onto the tier three of Secret on this top lane. And Secret, they're gonna to struggle to defend this one. There's a defuser blade now done on Envy, but he's got no horn. See what he can do, walking in onto Loda, well with the control from Pi as well, but again EGM, he's down the sidelines, bringing him in, having the tether, he's got the heels out, Puppy, trying to move forward, focusing EGM on the backlines, but the cheese is eating and Puppy's down, they've lost Puppy, they've lost Pi like that, they're gonna lose Envy as well here, and that's 80 seconds off, no buybacks on these three heroes as Alliance, they look to be doing it, they'll take down the melee from the top, they'll move towards the mid lane secret, they're not tapping out yet, but this game, 25 to 18 of 38 minutes, the GG is called, the Alliance have done it. They've taken now Secret here in this first game, and I've got to be honest, Blitz, it just looked a little bit scrappy from some of the calls on Secret, and overall, just really, really tight, tight team play from Alliance. Yeah, Alliance dictated the pace in all portions of the game. Yeah. They chose where they were going to take the fights. They knew that Secret were going to go for that Roshan, but we saw Secret just did not do it very quickly, which allowed Alliance to get in the pit. They first popped that CK ultimate. Puppy's in a situation where he's got to doom the CK, who's already used almost all of his abilities. EGM's just sitting there healing him up, and they even uh, get the... It's, yeah, so much on the support play. I mean, EGM and Ake, that game. They I mean, did we just, phenomenally. Uh, uh, to the point where you've got to be worried about letting out